Welcome. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning the how of programming by reviewing code examples that demonstrate tuples, what they do, what makes them different than lists, and what it means to be immutable. And then we're going to talk about a different type called sets and how sets are a lot like a Venn diagram. They have the ability to calculate union, intersection, or difference, or even symmetric difference. So get ready, because these are a couple fun types to play with. Let's get started. So let's start talking about tuples. So tuples are very similar to lists. The main way you can tell the difference is because of the brackets on the outside. The circular brackets mean that it's a tuple. The square brackets mean that it's a list. And the difference is being that the tuple is unordered and immutable, meaning it can't be changed. And we'll talk about that more in a second. But let's start by just creating a list and creating a tuple so we can compare the difference. So when we run these first three cells, you'll see that even when they're printed to the console, they have the different bookends. So that's one of the easiest ways to tell what we're dealing with. Also, of course, we could simply ask by using one of our favorite functions, type, and noting that it's a tuple also. OK, now let's look at some of the methods that are going to come with tuples. So let's use our trusty dot tab function here that Jupyter allows us to do to see what methods a type has. So by hitting period and then hitting tab, I can see that a tuple has two methods, count and index. So here's a question. Before we look at those, what do you think is going to happen when we do a dot tab on my list? You think a list is going to have more or less methods? Whoa, tons more, right? OK, so the reason why there's so many more is because of an important property of tuples, and that is that they are immutable. We can't have an immutable tuple that's pointing to a mutable element. So there can be some changes, but on the highest level, the tuple is a secure, unchangeable thing. Now let's make a couple tuples. Let's make some DC villains because they're immutable. You wouldn't want to get rid of them. And then an integer one for pi. So one cool thing is that we can cast these into lists. We want to maybe edit these, but they're immutable. So what we do is we can take pi, we wrap it in a list function, and then we end up with a list. We can actually wrap this list inside of a tuple. So new list, tuple, and it's going to become a tuple again. So you can see now it's locked into place here. And finally, I just want to show you that just like the list, we can use the for loops, which once again, we haven't talked too much about yet. But we can use logic on individual elements in a sequential order. One of the easiest being simply printing them out. So one, two, three, four, five. If you know lists, you know tuples. Time to talk sets. Sets are very powerful, and they are different from lists and tuples because they don't have duplicates, and they're not stored in order, and they are mutable. So I think of them kind of as Venn diagrams, like the same way you could imagine a Venn diagram using unions or intersections or differences. That's usually the way that we're going to work with sets. So we'll show some examples of that after we get the syntax down. The main syntax is to use these curly brackets on both sides. So you're probably noticing the pattern here with the square bracket for list and the parentheses for tuples and now the curly braces. Actually, the curly braces are used for both dictionaries and for sets, but the difference is a set only has one item in between the commas. Main thing to notice is that it has the curly braces here. So let's make a set. There we go. We've got Dylan, Elmer, Guillermo, Jen, and Naomi. So what type is this? Well, it's a set, like we said it would be. Now, there's also a function for creating sets. And we can pass in a set, or we can pass in a list. But of course, we can't pass in the elements in the same way we would a list. It only takes one argument. The argument needs to be made up of several elements. So just for an example, we can see the function creates sets in both of these situations. OK, so now let's talk about the duplicates, because that's one of the big things about sets, is that in this list, we have the number 2, 2, 2, 2, and that's just fine with a list. We can have a whole bunch of duplicate elements. It's going to remember them in order in a sequence. But a set does not. It can only have the element one time. So we're going to make this list a set and see what happens. We're making my list with the duplicates, and then we're passing that into the set function to make it a set. So when we look down here at the length of my list, when we check the length of this original one and we check the length of my set, you're going to notice that they're different sizes because it's eliminated all of the duplicates. In fact, if we actually want to print out my set here, 
you can see that it's now one, two, three, four, five instead of one, two, 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 three, four, five. And now I want to talk about what we would do if we had a list of strings. So here we have a list of strings that we're turning into a set. Now remember the dot split method is going to take each word and separate it by the space and make it a list of strings instead of one long string. So we can think of this as inputting a string for my, a separate string for peanut, another string for is, and then turning that into a list, which is then turned into a set. When we do that, I want to show that it does consider the difference between capitals separate and unique. Elmer, my, and is my, is coming in as a separate character. And this makes sense. The Unicode behind the capital M and the lowercase m are separate, so it sees these as totally different elements. So even though it might read the same, we have to remember that something like a capital might be seen as different and unique to the computer when it makes the sets. Enough with the Venn diagram stuff. Now let's talk unions. So to take the union of two sets is as simple as calling one of its methods. Now we're gonna need two different sets to work with. So let's take the first one again. My peanut is named Elmer. And then let's make another set, which is just names. But one of the names happens to be Elmer. So you'll see Elmer here and you'll see Elmer there. Now we know that sets can't have duplicates and when a union is checked, it's going to see if there's any duplicates between the two different sets. The way this would work is we can pick either one, we'll start with names, and then we do dot union to access the method, and then we pass in the other set. And when we do this, we will get a return that has every single unique element in either set. So we're combining the two. Now something like Elmer that's in twice is still only going to show up one time but anything that's in either of the sets that's unique is gonna make it into this super master list. So you might wanna use something like union if you're combining two databases together and you say, okay, like you've got a big list of names and I've got a big list of names and we know some of them are duplicates, so let's push them together using the union and it will create a list of everything in both lists, but not duplicates of any. So we don't end up with two of one name. And just to show you, we can actually do it the exact opposite way too. So peanut, because it's also a set, is going to have a method union, and then we can pass names into that one. And either way we do it, we're gonna end up with the same list. Let's talk intersections. So very similar to how unions worked, we have methods that allow us to do this. And then we simply do names dot intersection, access the method and pass in peanut. You're gonna remember from high school math, do you guys remember what the intersection is gonna do as opposed to the difference? Only Elmer, I don't know if you guys expected that. If you did, kudos, good, good job paying attention in high school. But the reason we got that is because the intersection is the only place in both lists where the same element shows up. So we have Elmer here and we have Elmer. And you know, once again, just remembering that the reason why these look similar is because we're using this dot split to break this up. If we do the reverse, do you think we're gonna get the same thing? Yep. Either way you do an intersection, it's only gonna bring you the things that overlap specifically. So once again, if you have a big database and maybe you wanna say, gosh, I wonder what in our database is overlapping, like who's signed up for your website and has also signed up for mine, you could compare email lists or something like that. So intersections are powerful. Now let's talk difference. This is a really powerful way to think about sets. So we'll make our traditional sets again, our peanut and name set. Now what do you think is gonna be returned when we do peanut.difference for the method and then we pass in names? Is that what you expected? Because I remember this one tripped me up when I was even writing this. It took me a second to remember what the difference actually was. But just like when you're doing subtraction, you have to remember that, say, 3 minus 5 is actually negative 2. You have to think of the first one as being sort of like the staple to compare the next one to. It does matter the order that we put these in. So names.difference and passing in peanut is different than peanut.difference passing in names. So here the way to think about this is that we have peanut and it's a set with all of these elements. My peanut is named and what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring in another set and it's gonna check if anything overlaps and if it does overlap, it will be removed. So it found Elmer in the second set that was passed in so it removed Elmer from the first set and we ended up with something that was close to my peanut is named and then there's no Elmer in here and Elmer, which has been removed again, is my name. So you can see here we have everything that we had inside of peanut except it's now missing Elmer because that was the one word that was overlapping in the other. Just kind of think through the logic. You sort of know what's going to happen here, but it might not be instantly recognizable. So in this one, we're going to get all of the names minus Elmer because Elmer was the only one that was in the peanut set.
tons of use cases for that too. If you're trying to say like, you know, remove all of these things from my database or something along those lines. Now let's talk about symmetric difference because this is the one that is a little bit more intuitive for me. This is the one that just says subtract everything if it's in both lists. So we can do names.symmetric difference peanut or peanut.symmetric difference names and we end up with the same result. We have a list here that just removes anything that's duplicated like Elmer but it does combine everything else. So we do end up with names like Guillermo and we do end up with words like peanut that are only in one or the other set. And then of course just to prove that it works we'll look at it in the reverse. So very cool. Now we know how to work with sets. We can do all of these unions and intersections and differences and tuples and their immutable states and the difference between lists and all of that. So the only thing left for the basic group types is the almighty dictionary. Get ready. We're going key value pairs in the next lesson. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.